14. He said, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek and seek and seek my face. Please, how many of us are seeking the face for the problem we have? You know, we don't know the ramification that there is no money to share. Let me try to boil it down so that you will know. When there's salary, market women will sell. School fees will be paid. People will build their houses because they have been saving. They say every month I will take this thing and it, it may be small but collectively. Which means that when they don't have all the tomatoes you want to buy to sell will rot him. Nobody will buy. Is he that has blood that donates blood? You that is putting many things on social media, say you have your own mall online. You are putting many things on your status for people to buy. They will be passing it. They will be passing it. The highest they do, they will order, you will supply, they won't pay. <laughs> Finally, they will tell you, even federal government, they owe. That's, that's, you, 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 you know, we don't look at it this way. We look at it say, <laughs> say so they said they will not give. Now, the job, however. Listen, it will affect every one of us. But the question is that, how many of us have taken our time to seek his face? And say, Lord, for this, why? That means that some people can die because of 2,000 naira to pay hospital bill. Oh, you are to this thing. Some of our federal hospitals, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are, they are, they are, they are like private hospitals. When they hit you, bill, you yourself will shake. So one of them is looking at me, but it's okay. <laughs> we don't know. Look at that. It can even result to marital crisis. And children may not understand. But the question we need to ask, who will seek his face? And in seeking his face, it's just to come before him. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. In you, we move and we have our being. All we need to do is to seek him. Lord, we know that we have problem, but you have solution. We know. We know that there is problem. There is problem all over the nation. There is problem in the world today. Some nations are telling you they are in recession. They have even agreed that they are in recession. We don't have a welfare system. Our welfare system is family. So if you call your brother, your brother say, now nah, wow. You call your sister, he's going to say, now nah, wow. Many years ago, we were telling you, go and farm. I'm sure those were back okay one time and say, where's your farm? Please, where's your farm? Today, they, they disrupt farm for development. I ask myself, is farming not development? But how do we seek his faith? We seek his face. You know, intimate, pursuing intimacy is Bible reading. It's not, 30, it's not 30 seconds. It's not reading Bible on projector. Pursuing his heart is staying. That's why we have a Bible reading plan here. Pursuing his heart is setting out time to pray. Pursuing his heart, seeking his face is setting out time to be with believers. To fellowship is not convenience, it's a sacrifice. That I'm going for a live group, you think it's convenient. It's not convenient. It's sacrifice that I have to move and go and fellowship with people. Because you know what? Where two or three are gathered in my name. To come to prayer room is sacrifice. 
David said, I will not offer to God that that does not cost me anything. My wife was reading that scripture. I won't offer. Yeah, last week. I won't offer him. But every day, every day, I see believers acting as unbelievers. Offering to God that that does not cost them anything. But why don't you come for fellowship? Can't we do it after Sunday service? So that we all quickly wrap up. Because Sunday is for God. Monday to Saturday is for me. And I only read Bible on Sunday. I'm from the projector. We thank God for our pastor. He's a digital pastor. He used to present this thing to us. I thank God for my life, oh, according to my mother-in-law. Listen. Pursuing his presence is praying. Pursuing his presence is worshipping. Pursuing his presence is gathering worship m- music around you. Pursuing is seeking his face. Is also doing what he tells you to do. Seeking his face is looking at what your brother is doing. Do you know what shocks me sometimes? That my brother Derek will be doing something wrong. I'll be siding him. Or let me say, let me say, I, I'll, I'll be on his side. I'll be taking sides with him. I'll be violating, saying, now only small thing do now. Now, now only 10,000 will take now. Have you, have you had that? We, we, we say, my, this boy is duping people. Say, but the Lord said we should love each other. You see what we are saying now? It's for us to tell him, No. That's not how our family behaves. Do you know if believers in this country can do one right a day? My friend Pastor Matthew Amalo was saying yesterday, he put pure water in the church, a paper, on the floor. This one will come, we'll kick it this way. Another one will push it this way. Nobody picked it up. How can you seek his face when you don't do what he tells you? And let me tell you as I go to the second one. As we seek his face, he tells us what to do. And this second one I want to tell you is what God is telling us to do. A very high personality in this nation called my friend and said, What do you think we should do? And he was sharing with me and I said, This is what the Lord is telling me to do. The problem of this, church, of this nation is past one church. It's past one. It's past one denomination. It's past one movement. It's a collective responsibility and call to every believer to wake up. And which is erecting altars to God. Erecting altars. Whether it's your family altar. And some people will be asking because I don't want you to leave you confused what altar is. I will share with you what an altar is. A healthy individual is a function of a healthy family. The family unit is the smallest unit of the society, yet is the strongest unit of the society. I'm using this to say that every problem we see in the society, most of those problems begin at the relationship level. Politics, government, business, economy, sports, entertainment, most problems begin at the, at the relationship level. How do we get to the root cause of the symptoms of the things we see in the society? That's the question this symposium touch point is here to address. I want to welcome you to Unbound, an inner healing and transformation touch point that will be bordering on getting to the root cause. Most times when you see an iceberg, you see the tip. 80% of the ice is under the water. Most times, 80% of what is causing harm and, and what is dangerous in our society is actually under the water. With this, I want to uh, invite you to this conference that is that will be coming up June 24th to 26th. And at number 5 Oregonian Street, off Adenya Road, off Ihama Road, Pinning City, Edo State, Nigeria. This edition will be strictly for couples. This is one conference you would not love to meet. 
see you there. It's not a one-line definition. It's a cocktail. Erecting altars. It's time for us to erect altars. As I began to seek God's face, erect altars. He told us in 2014, it's now time. He said, where I want to take you to, this is what I want you to do. But primarily, our open heavens prayer started when there was a burden to pray for our nation. That was how it started. And I want to keep it that way because some people have a way of turning it to their own personal. And I know it's not popular. He said, this prayer point, what, are we, what, what is my own inside? He said, but it's for all of us. He said, no. My own. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What God wants to give to you, wants to give through you. It's not give me my daily bread. Give us our daily bread. That means that I can pray for daily bread. I can pray for my own money. I can pray for my own provision. And you know what? God in his mercy will know I'm far away from it. So he sends it to my brother Derek. And Derek in connecting and seeking his face will know that I need money. We can't pray our lost prayer when we are not in community. And the erecting of altars is for a collection of all of us. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 12, verse 8 to 9. From there he went on towards the hills the east of Bethel. Speaking about Abraham. And pitched his tent with Bethel on the, east, on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 16 to 19, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone and he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. The same place, he was running instead of humbling himself and repenting in his brother. He was running. But he got to a place that somebody has already erected an altar. His grandfather has already erected an altar. So there was a portal to heaven there. Will you create an open heavens for your generation? And he got to that place. And he saw angels ascending and descending. Because somebody has already erected an altar and there was an open heaven. My prayer is that people will, 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 will come towards the fringes of Benin City, Edo State. They will walk through and they will encounter angels. Amen. And people will start repenting on the road. Some of you will say, hmm, you're deceiving yourself. Are you a great man of God? Listen, there is no prayer that is weak. I have received the fullness of the Holy Spirit without measure. You too. Your prayer is powerful. Who told you you are not powerful? You are powerful. Maybe our teachings have removed power from you. But today I want to make you know that you are powerful. And Jesus said, as he was talking to Nathaniel, when he told Nathaniel, about, he told, had a word of knowledge for Nathaniel, and Nathaniel asked him, how did you know? He said, he then added, 
in John, in John chapter 1 verse 51. I tell you the truth, you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So what is an altar? What is an altar? An altar is a spiritual gateway. It's a spiritual gateway. A city can be an altar. A Mongo in Guatemala became, became a gateway where there was revival. Revival was so much that carrot was not like the tubers of yam. The land was so blessed that the jailhouse closed. The policemen did not have work to do anymore. An altar is our hearts. I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new heart. You can be a gateway for your nation. You can be a gateway for your family. You can be a gateway. A city can be a gateway for God to come in. An altar is a priority in our lives. What are the priorities in your life? The priorities. The priorities in our life. My pr it's your priority prayer. It's your priority the things of God. That's an altar. It's your priority a custodian for the nation. That's an altar. Number four. Intimate communion with God. Intimate communion with God is an altar. Where I want to see your face. I want to seek you. I want to talk to you on a daily basis. I don't want an intermediary. It's an altar. An altar is also a place of sacrifice. My wife was talking yesterday. I think last week. Or thereabout. Where people go and sacrifice, altar, sacrifice to an altar. It's a place for sacrifice. It may shock you. Every church, every place they call upon the name of the Lord is a place to offer sacrifice. Every place that people call upon other juju is also an altar. That's why sometimes your junction can be an altar where people put, put, put sacrifices. They are calling upon demonic spirits. And you know what? Every altar that is more potent is the one that will win. It's the one that will win. Listen. In Hebrews chapter 7 verse 12. It says when the priesthood changes, the laws will change. When the priesthood changes, the law will change. Does it not bother you today that evil is called good? Evil is called good. We are seeing on a screen a man and a man kissing. And we are saying, is there anything bad about it? The priesthood has changed. For laws to change physically, it must change in your heart first. The priesthood has changed. Question I need to ask. Have you abandoned your altar? When you abandon your altar, life does not make room for vacuum. Other, other priests will, will arise. The unholy priests, they will arise and they will begin to offer their own sacrifice. And the more that the unholy priests offer their own sacrifices and there are more you know what will happen darkness will start coming listen to me nigerians darkness is coming until all your priests go to their altar i know you like personal breakthrough but please drop all this personal breakthrough it must resort to corporate breakthrough let's go back to our altar let's go back to our altar go to the altar of your marriage the Bible is speaking about your bed. That's why you must, as a place of sacrifice, your bed, husband and wife, your bed is an altar. It's an altar for the potters of heaven. That's why I say your bed undefiled. It's an altar. An altar is a place of continuous fire. In Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, it said the fire must keep on being born, must be burning on the altar. It is God to start the fire. It is my responsibility to keep it burning. It's my responsibility to put burnable material. It's my responsibility to, to come in, to, in worship all the time. So people say, I don't have time. I don't have time. I know you have time. You have not prioritized it. So there's no altar. There's no altar. Okay, what would we give to God to work with? If God say go up and go up, is that what you say? Usaga where he will do it. But you see, most times God does not move with his sovereign move. He, most times he moves and subjects himself to our prayers. What do you want? I don't want my nation to go in the way of what of, of I don't want you to go to the dogs. If it means me to stay in the place of prayer for 24 hours. If it's only me. God is saying, I'm not looking for people. I'm looking for a man that will stand in the gap and will minister. Just one man. Just one man. Can I get men and women in this house who will stand in the gap? Let me tell you, transformational prayers is like giving birth. It's like giving birth. 
Apostle Paul said, my children to whom I travel much in prayer, until Christ is formed in you. Until Christ is formed in you. Transformational prayer is like giving birth. There's a coming in movement of young people who will seek the face of God. Who will seek the face of God. There will be a revival. They will not be bothered about what to eat, what to wear. They will be bothered about we want to follow God. We want the sweet influences of heaven. It's coming to that. Some people think that Nigerians and all the youth, they, all they want is money. No, there's a breed that he has kept for himself. There's a breed he has kept for himself that will seek God's face. They won't be bothered about the daily needs of, of every average person. All they will be bothered about is that did God come? Did God come? We want to see the next move of God. We want to see they will be hungry. This set of people will be so hungry. They will be hungry for generations. They will knock on church doors and say, open, we want to come in to pray. Transformational prayers is in the best position. As soon as Zion traveled, it gave forth her child. Transformational prayer is like Elijah going to the Mount of Carmel and putting his face between his and crying to God, Lord. Transformational prayer is like David instituting the tabernacle of David over a city over a nation and for those number of years it's called it was it's called the golden years of israel why 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 david understood when the presence of god is in a city things work well things work well because david was someone that pursued intimacy with god every time you see david losing something the next thing he will say he will inquire of the lord I need people that will inquire of the Lord concerning our security challenges. Should I tell you something? Maybe you do not know. Most of the people who are in leadership do not know what to do. Because you cannot solve a problem at the level it started. You can only solve a problem at another level. Believers, praying to God is not weakness. Praying to God is meekness. So that you want to assess answers. Praying to God is not knowing, is not, is not. A healthy individual is a function of a healthy family. The family unit is the smallest unit of the society, yet is the strongest unit of the society. I'm using this to say that every problem we see in the society, most of those problems begin at the relationship level. Politics, government, business, economy, sports, entertainment, most problems begin at the, at the relationship level. How do we get to the root cause of the symptoms of the things we see in the society? That's the question this symposium touch point is here to address. I want to welcome you to Unbound, an inner healing and transformation touch point that will be bordering on getting to the root cause. Most times when you see an iceberg, you see the tip. 80% of the ice is under the water. Most times, 80% of what is causing harm and, and what is dangerous in our society is actually under the water. With this, I want to uh, invite you to this conference that is that will be coming up June 24th to 26th. And at number 5 Oregonian Street, off Adenia Road, off Ihama Road, Pinning City, Edo State, Nigeria. This edition will be strictly for couples. This is one conference you would not love to meet. See you there.
Order for copies of this message or other series by Ben and Kay Akigbe II, please visit the firm exchange at number 5 Oregbeni Street of Idenya Road of Ihamaro GRA Benin City. You could also contact us via our telephone numbers 080-510-28787-070-696-96499. You could send us an email on info at femfoundationng.org. Or you could visit our website on www.femfoundationng.org. 
Thanks and God bless.